Hi everyone, this is Pawan and welcome to my channel Dynamics. This is the first video of a CNC series in which I will demonstrate how to build a CNC machine from scratch for less than $150. I'm going to use easily available materials to build this so that uh, the cost is low but still the machine is sturdy. I should mention that I have no prior experience in any kind of carpentry or metalsmith works. So if you find any issues with the way I am implementing this or uh, any recommendations, suggestions, I would appreciate it if you can leave it in the comment section. This particular machine can get uh, cut uh, plywood, MDF, hardwood. I have not tried it on aluminium yet but I am pretty sure it will work. Let us see. As you can see, this can cut with a reasonably good finish and I am sure if I use better settings and the experience, I will get better at that also. And this machine can also cut on hardwood as you can see. This particular uh, project took about 40 minutes and uh, if I increase the resolution in the CAD, I am sure I can get better finish but uh, even this looks pretty good for uh, something I cooked up at home. So, okay. Let's get started. I have not done any videos before, so you will have to forgive my poor cameramanship, but I will try to make it up uh, using the CAD model. This machine has a workspace of two feet by two feet, but it can be increased, extended to pretty much any size, and it would only cost you extra 15 to 20 bucks. This has a Z depth of 60 mm, but you can increase it to 120 mm. The original plan when I started was to make this using uh, plywood, except everything except the angles. Uh, I was supposed to use 20mm plywood, double sided, double laminated plywood. As you can see, originally I fastened the angles to the side plates using square blocks of uh, plywood. Not sure if you can see it in the video, but at this point of time, I realized that I can use MS, mild steel. I made a CAD model for all the parts I need and I reached out to a laser cutting services vendor. He told me that he'd charge me $10 including material which is 4mm thick MS. I was really surprised to know that it's so cheap. So let's go over the parts I'm going to use. This is all the hardware I'm going to use for x-axis, y-axis, partly for z-axis also. Other than this, I'm going to use a lead screw setup for z-axis which I will cover later. So I'm going over uh, each things, each gantry plate and stuff. These are the belt clamps I'm going to use to fasten the angles to the side plates. Uh, this is what I, these are what I'm calling the angle holders. I will show you in video coming how I'm going to use it. This is the uh, little gizmo that is going to hold the uh, timing belt to the side plates like that. The next thing is uh, the angles. This is a uh, example sample of what uh, I'm going to use. 5 mm thick, 30 mm on the sides. And then the hardware. The nuts and bolts. I've used M8, 3, 4 inches. And uh, then bearings. I'm using 608ZZ bearings. We're going to need about 48 of those and it costed me about $15. Don't have to use very high quality. But uh, yeah, you need as many. These are, this is the material I'm going to use for the side plates. This is the only wooden part in the machine. This is the double sided, double laminated plywood of 20 mm thick. I went to a carpenter and uh, I just asked him to cut them to size. Uh, 100 mm by 300 mm. So this is the uh, chopper motor holder. It's in compliance with the NEMA 23. And let's get started. The first thing we are going to build are the uh, Y uh, linear guides or rails, whatever it is you want to call. So this is, uh, I just made this model so it will be easy for me to explain. So I am using three of those uh, uh, angle holders. The first thing we need to do is uh, uh, drill the holes in the side plates. As a template, I am using one of the gantry plates. It helps if you can clamp it down, clamp both of them together and uh, try to make the hole as straight as possible. As you, once you are done, you want to align them together and make sure that they are perfectly like so. 
after you have done that you need to do the same for all the rest of the three side plates it will help if you can clamp uh, two of them to the together so that the holes are aligned perfectly make sure you are drilling the holes as straight as possible and there you go i have all four four of them or all four of them drilled and i have marked the sides in which they align properly the next step is to fasten the angle holders instead of going all three i used one of the nuts in the middle that will give me more space to use the belt clamp we'll see we'll see we'll see in the next few minutes how to do that uh, make sure you use washers on both sides of the side plate because otherwise the plywood will just cramp there you go the next step is to use these belt clamps to mount the angles on top of these uh, angle holders it will help if you can just crush them into this kind of elliptical or diagonal shape it will be easy to uh, mount them on you need to do four of these you need four of these and uh, in order to uh, okay these are the angles i'm using they are two and two and a half feet five mm thick i went to a metal smith and asked him i gave him the sizes you need four pairs of these sizes xyz and the waist board he just uh, he straightened it and gave it to me for about 15 dollars in because it was surprisingly cheap actually so uh, in order to uh, fasten the side plates to the angles it will help if you use one of the angle holders as spacer as i am doing you don't actually need them later but you can use them as a mechanical support later uh, you can you can just leave it there if you are using a very long uh, machine like the size is big in my case it is not required because it's just two and a half feet but if you want to go for four feet five feet then you can leave them as spacers as you can see it took some time for me to get it straight uh, but uh, the first one took time second time onwards it didn't it took me about five six minutes to get this up and running so once you have uh, use spacers and uh, mounted the uh, belt clamps don't tighten them too hard you need to actually fasten them onto the angle holders on the side plates you just loose is enough after that you just space them apart and uh, put the angle hold uh, put the angles in the center and then just align them and slight push should uh, just pop right it into the place like so on both sides There you go. So once you have done that, you need to tighten the belt clamps. Remember, we have not tightened them completely, and you really need to put your muscle into this because if this is the whole thing, this is the thing that is holding everything together. So get it as tight as you can without breaking it. There you go. I have done uh, both of them, and uh, this is where we'll stop the first video. We'll see you in the next video. If you like this video, don't forget to click on the like icon and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for your support.